not too long ago, Douglas MacArthur, I follow him on Twitter, Army Carl Nell, once one of the country's leaders, he's been opening up about a lot of things. As a veteran, I stand with what he's saying. Is it part of the gambit? Because we know we have enemies within the line. Well, we had enemies within the government and only, and everybody couldn't say something unless they wanted to be on the line. Yeah, I stand with what he's saying here. Okay? All right? And all you other gunfighters out there, I hope you stand as well. Not every gunfighter was in the military. I want y'all to listen to us. I want to hear your take on it. I don't advocate violence, but we have a regime and overpopulated government, a fraud of a government, pushing narratives and very evil, vile things. I want to know where you stand, especially my orthogonous sisters and brothers and the rest of the world. I hope you're listening. So pay attention. Here we have Colonel Douglas, Mac retired Colonel Douglas MacArthur. Americans, I am Colonel Douglas McGregor, combat veteran and former senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense under President Trump. As chief executive officer of our country, our choice, I want to respectfully present an alternative view of the State of the Union. The Constitution, our nation's guiding light, mandates that the government promote the general welfare, a charge that obligates Washington to secure the basic necessities of life, energy, food, and shelter. Regrettably, the current administration is failing to perform these tasks. The current administration claims the gross domestic product is booming, but much of it comes from government spending and employment. The government share of gross domestic product in the United States today is 42 percent, including federal, state, and local spending. This outrageous share is similar to what it was in the Soviet Union in the late 1980s before the collapse. Rampant inflation stemming from this government share of the economy makes it difficult for families to buy nutritious food. A dozen eggs, which could be bought for less than $1 in 2019, now ranges from 2 to $4 today, with price increases of over 100%. In the same period, a median household income increased by a mere 9%. High mortgage interest rates jumping from 2% to 7.5% in less than three years places the dream of home ownership out of reach for too many Americans. Our national security is compromised. Unstable supply chains leave many store shelves empty. Our power plants and manufacturing facilities lack key spare parts. Ill-conceived domestic policies result in job losses and homelessness. The pursuit of misguided foreign military interventions has not only drained our resources, but also imperiled our hard-won energy independence, subjecting Americans to rising fuel prices and foreign influence. Today, the government employs an estimated 2.87 million people. If we include federal contractors, this number balloons to between 12 and 25 million. All of these events occur against the backdrop of a national sovereign debt that has skyrocketed to 34 trillion. Even worse, we are currently adding another trillion dollars to national debt roughly every three months. It is impossible to drain the swamp with unsound money and a colossal debt that we cannot sustain. Tragically, D.C. Beltway politicians are controlled by the so-called donor class. This form of corruption is enabled by a cancerous central banking system. With privileged access to capital, this ruling class orchestrates endless wars, enriching themselves and their cronies while sending our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines to serve in foreign lands of marginal strategic interest to the United States. Meanwhile, open borders are allowing millions of illegals or migrants to flood into our country. This uncontrolled influx is straining our resources, overwhelming our communities, and destroying our prosperity. Reckless calls to defund and punish the police are crippling law enforcement. Officers are underfunded, undermanned, and unable to protect our citizens, making our cities unsafe for all, especially women, children, and the elderly. Open borders cannot be divorced from an explosion of criminality never before seen in the history of our country. The number of Americans dying from illegal drug or fentanyl overdose is over 100,000 each year, much of it trafficked through the wide open southern border. There are more than 26,000 homicides each year, according to the FBI crime statistics. This is likely an underaccount because in the last two years, more than 40% of police agencies did not report data, 
because of a change in the system the FBI uses under political pressure. The number of missing children each year is estimated at over 800,000, which works out to be over 2,000 children every day. This alarming statistic is worsened by the overt sexualization of our children in public schools. Our children are our future. They should be protected, not exploited. Washington has also spent $14 trillion on various Middle East wars over the last 23 years in a series of self-defeating military interventions. More recently, Washington spent hundreds of billions of dollars on an unnecessary war with Russia, with little to show for it except higher prices for millions of Americans at the supermarket and the gas pump. Trillions were also wasted in the aftermath of the engineered COVID disaster, enriching the laptop class, Silicon Valley, Wall Street, and big business, while American workers, small business owners, and independent contractors were destroyed. Trillions have been wasted on unreliable green energy, with metals mined in Africa and processed in China, while destroying American jobs and ignoring our domestic resources. The bottom line is the State of the Union is not strong. In fact, it is fragile and deteriorating. The question before us is where does America go from here? Consider the following actions that should be taken as soon as possible. First, we must secure our borders, our airports and harbors. Defending the United States and the American people must be our top priority in national defense. Second, unless the United States itself is attacked, we must avoid unnecessary conflict. Prosperity at home demands peace abroad. U.S. national security must not be hostage to foreign interests or their domestic agents inside the United States. Third, we must restore the rule of law inside our country. We must remove activist judges who fail to uphold the Constitution and who release violent criminals and illegals into our country. It is time to revisit the practice of judicial appointments for life. Fourth, an effective American military establishment demands merit-based selection and promotion. Fundamental reform to reduce overhead and maximize fighting power is vital. Today, we have 43 four-stars for 1.1 million soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. In 1943, when 12 million men were serving, we had only seven four-stars. However, strengthening our nation's security and restoring the rule of law are only part of the equation. We must also focus on revitalizing our economy and harnessing American innovation to secure our prosperity for generations to come. We must restore energy independence to America as soon as possible with a mix of resources including natural gas, nuclear, solar, and wind. We must reinvigorate American agriculture and incentivize family farmers and producers. We must outlaw foreigners and vulture capitalists from buying American farmland, securing access to food and our national independence. We must repatriate advanced manufacturing to the American heartland, maximizing the use of 3D printing, artificial intelligence, and robotics. To staff these jobs for the future, we must make public education a path to employment. American companies and individuals must be given one-time tax exemptions to bring trillions of dollars back to the United States. We must act swiftly to pare down the staffing of federal government agencies. Elon Musk eliminated 70% of woke staff at X, formerly Twitter, with no loss of site performance. We can do the same with our bloated bureaucracy. We must audit the Federal Reserve. They have failed in their mandate to maximize employment and maintain price stability. Lastly, cutting Spending will not arrest the destructive impact of the national sovereign debt. We must restructure the debt to regain productivity and financial stability. Ultimately, we must reclaim our birthright as a free and sovereign people. We must restore the American dream for generations to come. We must renew our faith in our country. It is time for a course correction, ladies and gentlemen, a return to principles that have guided our nation through its darkest hours. We must recommit ourselves to the ideals of representative government, where the elected officials are truly accountable to the people they serve. Elected officials and bureaucrats who put foreign interests over American ones must go. Our nation's future depends on our unity and resolve to put America first. 
Only through such a renewed commitment can we restore the promise of a nation where every citizen has access to affordable energy, nutritious food, and secure shelter. The self-styled ruling class of globalist elites must not be allowed to enrich themselves at the expense of the American people. My fellow Americans, the road ahead is arduous, but our cause is just. Our cause is the return of prosperity at home, equality before the law, and peace abroad. Let us march forward, united in our pursuit of a more perfect union where the blessings of liberty are shared by everyone. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Join our movement at ourcountryourchoice.com and be part of the future to save America. Thank you.